All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we got to talk about these free agents, man. There's so many veteran players available in free agency at positions of need that we still currently have. Granted, the draft just happened, and we brought in a lot of very talented undrafted free agents. But if you want to make sure that we have certain positions filled up, you can go and attack free agency very aggressively. And just to let y'all know, I've already spoken about it in another video, but Monday, free agency will heat up because as of monday as in tomorrow when you sign veteran free agents that left their teams in free agency that weren't cut of course because if you were cut you just didn't count towards the compensatory pick anyway but as of monday no matter who you sign from where they came from and however they left their team they will not count against you in the compensatory pick formula and it goes both ways so if somebody were to sign eric flowers or landon collins from us tomorrow then that wouldn't help us in our compensatory pick formula either so it's just all of the reason to go out there and be as aggressive as you can because it won't affect you negatively to bring guys in. And if you lose guys, you get nothing back in return. You won't get compensatory picks. You won't get anything for it. Eric Flowers can sign a five-year, $800 million contract deal as of tomorrow, and we wouldn't even get a third-round compensatory pick for it. So it's just like, why not? If you got the money, use it. We still need to pay Terry McLaurin, but there's definitely some free agents out there that we need to take a look at. And I'm also going to go into further detail for each player for each position that I like the most so we're going to talk deeply about one corner we're going to talk deeply about one linebacker one defensive tackle and so on and so forth all the way down one tight end one guard I'm going to give you the list of everybody that's available with well, all of the notable guys. I'm not about to give y'all like hundreds and hundreds of players, but as far as realistic and at the very least decent options that we can sign, we're going to run through the list. And again, for each player that I want the most from each position group, I'm going to talk about in further detail. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video, just like this one, like I've been saying in all of my videos and live streams, endless content coming out get ready to get spammed because anything there is to talk about i'm gonna talk about it if we start signing some of these free agents of course i'm gonna do breakdowns on them as long as it's somebody that wasn't already on our team like somebody besides eric flowers and landon collins i'm probably even gonna do a film session on them and that would be for probably for channel members only speaking of channel members only definitely go become one because i will be doing film sessions on every player we brought in over the weekend even undrafted free agents even if i gotta find a highlight tape to react to if it's gonna be the same type of film session where i'm pausing i'm rewinding i'm showing things in slow motion breaking everything down but if all i have access to is a highlight tape then that's what we're breaking down i'm even trying to do that for all of the undrafted free agents especially my favorite ones without further ado let's get it All right, so starting with the tight ends, you have Eric Ebron, you have Blake Jarwin, you have Jared Cook, you have Tyler Croft, and you have Jesse James. But for me, my favorites, probably Kyle Rudolph for being cheap, and, and I'm going to give two for this one. A couple of these position groups, I have to get two, but I'm going to explain my reasoning why. So for Kyle Rudolph, he's like a solid veteran. He's probably going to be really cheap, and he's more realistic. But if we're talking about the tight end that's available in free agency right now that played the best when he was able to play when he was not hurt, it was easily Rob Gronkowski. It's not even really close. But would he even be willing to play for a team that's not necessarily a Super Bowl contender? Because everything we even showed you in the draft, we're not trying to build a Super Bowl team to go win this year. We played it safe in a lot of ways, and we're basically just trying to, I guess, take baby steps, go from seven wins to nine or ten this year, and then see if we can get the 11 next year, maybe win a playoff game or two, and then maybe three to five years from now we'll be Super Bowl contenders. But everything you saw in that draft, we, we drafted ceiling a couple of times, but generally those first three picks, we were going straight floor we're just trying to fill needs and just build a team that can win you 10 games right now i don't think rob gronkowski would want to even be a part of that maybe if you draft some blue chip players that are like crazy playmakers and then maybe by week five we're out here dominating people maybe you could try to convince a rob gronkowski but there's just no way the way our roster is currently constructed and is May 1st, we haven't done anything recently. I doubt we would get him. So I wanted to give you those two names because Kyle Rudolph would possibly sign. He signed with the Giants last year and nobody expected him to really do much. And so why would he not want to sign here? 
We had a better record than the Giants, and it looks like we should have a better record than them going into this season as well. So he's definitely the most realistic option. He's the most solid, logical option. But Rob Gronkowski is definitely the best tight end out of all available tight ends in free agency. And then guard-wise, I mean, it's only a few names. You have Trey Turner, who, even though he's only 28 years old, he basically seems like he's retired, like he's just done with football. But if he were available, you could argue he was definitely the best available free agent guard you also have billy price but for me the obvious answer is eric flowers bring eric flowers back for cheaper than what you were paying them for honestly i don't even exactly care how much you pay him as long as it's the same amount or less and i guess logic says it would have to be way less than what he was making because then what was the point of cutting him but at this point man just bring him back please please bring eric flowers back of course i would prefer a cheaper contract but there may be other teams out there fighting to get him so we'll see then again teams didn't really want him after he just left the dolphins we were able to get him back easily and actually finesse the situation to where we ended up paying him less money to bring him back than we would have if he didn't go to the dolphins at all so who knows maybe there isn't a big market out there for eric flowers but whatever you got to do man pay terry mclaurin bring back eric flowers and figure the rest out later then defensive ends you have jason pierre paul you have Carlos Dunlap, and then of course you have Jadavion Clowney, but I mean, I'm not willing to deal with that roller coaster, even though out of the entire list of edge rushers, who you would pick to be the most explosive and the most dominant when they're at their very best is Jadavion Clowney, even above the two guys that I'm about to mention after him, but of course you just don't expect to get that and whether it be him being even available due to injuries or even when he's out there is he giving it his all and that's why i was afraid of Kayvon thibodeau because i'm afraid he's gonna kind of be the same way when he's at his best you could definitely say he's the best edge rusher in this entire draft class but how often are you gonna get that and so same thing with Jadavion Clowney I'm completely good I don't even want to deal with that I don't care if he's coming here on a vet minimum I'm good then I mean hey Ryan Kerrigan bring him back for very cheap maybe he'd be willing to do it but honestly the best edge rusher available right now is clearly Melvin Ingram but the problem is with Melvin Ingram you know I think he's probably asking for more money than we're definitely willing to give him to be part of a rotation I mean I don't think he would necessarily start over Chase Young and Montez Sweat. And that's, of course, not because of production or history. That's just based off of potential. We believe in Chase Young. We believe in Montez Sweat to become those elite guys that we wanted them to become. And so if Melvin Ingram would have signed here, which, I, again, I highly doubt it for his projected role on the defense and how much money we'd be even willing to pay him, he would basically just be coming off the bench, even though he wouldn't necessarily deserve so because he's definitely been more productive than both of those guys the past couple of years for sure. So, hey. Hey, I mean, I guess Ryan Kerrigan for extremely cheap if he wants to like bed minimum type of thing and then defensive tackle wise you have eddie goldman you have akeem hicks you have brandon williams nadonic and sue and you also have star loot to lele who's a nice cheap option but for me it's got to be linval joseph i mean he was a top eight pass rushing defensive tackle last season and if you want to replace the pass rushing ability of Menaeonitis, there you go because Menaeonitis has never been a great run stopper we love him for the sacks that he gets bull rushing offense alignment into the quarterback and tackling them both at the same time Linval Joseph brings you that pass rush from the interior the problem is we just spent the second rounder on defensive tackle so I doubt we're going to spend considerable amount of money on defensive tackle and free agency but hey man we'll see I doubt it happens because Linval Joseph is probably asking for a lot of money even though he is 33 years old but we'll see and then linebackers is a pretty deep group of availability of Anthony Barr, AJ Klein, KJ Wright, Joe Schobert, Anthony Hitchens, and John Bostic. <laughs> yeah, please, anybody, literally anybody I just said, but John Bostic. Anybody. But for me, and I kind of got to break down three guys. I'm going to talk about two of them fairly briefly, but Dante Hightower. I mean, just based off of how good he looked back in 2019, you could argue he's the best guy available if you can get him back to that form. It's between him and Quan Alexander who have probably played the best out of all of these guys within the past five years. But Dante Hightower, is he even going to be healthy? Is he even that same guy at 32 years old that he was in 2019 when he made the Pro Bowl? But I mean, coverage-wise, run-stopping, he was just a monster in 2019. And that's not that long ago, but in football years, it kind of is. And again, he's been so injury-prone since then. So who knows, man? 
I mean, he, he skipped the one year with the pandemic, and then he came back and wasn't able to stay healthy with the Patriots last year. But who knows, man? Who knows, man? If you can get the best out of Dante Hightower, you get 2019 Dante Hightower, we have a top five defense in the NFL. But I just highly doubt you do. So I wanted to mention him, but I just don't necessarily think it's a smart move. Unless he's willing to come here for a crazy contract. Super team friendly, then I'm down. But I just don't see that from him, even after how injury prone he's been recently. So then you also have Quan Alexander, who another guy I would pay very cheap because who knows if he's even going to stay healthy. But he's still only 27 years old, probably still has his best year ahead of him and when he was at his best he looked really good but can he stay healthy and then you also have AJ Johnson from the Denver Broncos you know slightly different system and fairly undersized not like a true true middle linebacker but we're out there in nickel most of the time anyway with only two linebackers and you can argue we, we do that out of necessity because we just don't have linebackers that can cover and if you get AJ Johnson he can cover so maybe you probably would have three linebackers out there especially with Cole Holcomb becoming a better coverage linebacker and Jamin Davis I mean once he's out at will linebacker permanently he'll probably improve in coverage as well because he's more of a natural coverage guy than a run stopping guy so I don't know AJ Johnson could definitely work because if we're arguing who had the best 2021 season out of all these linebackers I've mentioned so far in this video you could argue AJ Johnson but he also got hurt for the Denver Broncos last year but if you believe in what he did for the Broncos last year you could definitely argue he's the best linebacker available then you have cornerbacks you have Trey Waynes Joe Hayden, Kyle Fuller, you have Jason Verrett, Kevin King, please no Kevin King, Maurice Kennedy, Tory McTire, but I think Chris Harris is probably the safest bet at 32 years old, solid veteran option, or in my opinion, the best available cornerback left in free agency is Bryce Callahan, but I think he's going to ask for a lot of money, man. I think he will, and he probably is trying to prioritize going back to the Denver Broncos, so we'll see. But out of all of these guys I just named, I believe moving forward, Bryce Callahan is probably projected to be the best. But of course, if we're talking about in the past, I mean, you got guys like Kyle Fuller and Chris Harris that were playing at Pro Bowl levels at one point in time. But I, who knows if they're going to play like that moving forward and how much money they're asking for. And then lastly, you have safeties. Of course, you have Tashawn Gibson, DeMonte Kazee, Jaquiski Tart. Tyron Matthew but honestly I think Landon Collins makes the most sense for us especially if he's willing to come here for extremely extremely cheap I mean we already asked him to take a pay cut then we traded for Carson Wentz and then we tried to ask him to take an even bigger pay cut he was like nah just go ahead and cut me bro and so if he's willing to come back I would be willing to take him especially for cheaper if we're able to pay Terry and everybody that we want to pay and we still can afford Landon Collins definitely bring him back because we're out here looking for a Buffalo nickel guy like Landon Collins where you can just bring back Landon Collins and stop worrying about it played very well that second half of the season when he played more of a linebacker role I mean that was the best I've seen him play since he's been on this team since we signed him to that ridiculous contract of course Tyron Matthew is my favorite option but teams are out here bidding for him I mean it's it's a war out there it's a fight and I just do not want to go out there and try to pay him 15 plus million dollars a year and we're still struggling to pay Terry I think Landon Collins for very cheap would make sense because you would probably still have money to pay Terry and get some of these other guys I've mentioned in this video so I prefer to go the cheaper route the more dependable route but it would be nice to bring in some all-stars like a Tyron Matthew I just doubt it happens but yeah man definitely get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video who are your favorite free agents that are available if I missed any definitely mention them in the comments and if anybody I touched on that you prefer that I didn't say I prefer let me know why and all of that man also you know include some contract numbers if you can think of something that you're willing to sign some guys to but yeah man definitely leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything like i said i'm spamming y'all with videos crazy content coming and coming and coming so stay tuned and i appreciate all the support man shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name you see scrolling on the screen right now if i find the time tomorrow i'll probably do a live stream just a draft review and i'll open up the phone lines for y'all to call in and let me know how y'all feel about everything we'll see how that goes man i definitely want to get a live stream done soon especially some time this week we'll see but yeah man i appreciate y'all i'll catch y'all later i'm out